feet? I think uh, I think six to eight. Yeah. Out here doing some ice fishing and I guess the ice is safe. We're always a little worried early in the season. Uh, we just drilled our first hole and it's about 13 inches thick, which is awesome. It's dark down there. Okay, it's not that deep, let's see. That's only like three feet, huh? On the top of the ice, it's six feet. So we're working with about, definitely a good spot to set a tip. Let me just jig a second here, maybe we'll catch one. Definitely a good spot to set a tip up. Let's get it just below the ice. What's going on here? It's frozen. There we go. Perfect. Okay, we are officially fishing. <laughs> Checking the depth of our holes here and we're aiming for pretty shallow water. We want about five to eight feet. That's what we're at. That one's probably five and a half. This one's probably six feet and we're targeting Northern Pike today. We are gonna be running two tip ups with bait. We're gonna start with herring that's from the Great Lakes. So it's like this super oily bait we're gonna be using. And then we're gonna drill two holes and we're gonna put on some jigs or some spoons. See if we can catch us some fish. Let's see if it's still oily. Yeah, I see that oil coming off of it. Right there. Okay, let's feed the fish. Come on, little guys. All right. Put a hair trigger on her. We're fishing. Yeah, let's drill one more hole. Out there, maybe? Well, clearly we picked a pretty uh, snowy day to come out ice fishing. First ice fishing trip of the season. And like Eric mentioned, we're out here for pike, but to be honest, we don't have any sort of like confirmed reports that there's pike out here. So this is a new lake to us and it would make sense for there to be pike because there's a nearby river that has them. So it just makes sense that they could end up in here. And pike, when they're hungry, they will bite like almost anything. So they really like a lot of spoons um, and just jigs. We find that this one works really well for us here. Just this red and white spoon. And then we also brought some other spoons. I've got this one. I don't know if I've ever tried this little guy, but his tail looks pretty cool. Eric's using, I believe he's using like a tube, uh, tube jig like this. We call them little dancers because they're real flashy. And those, the pike usually really like them and they'll actually tear up the back parts. We also brought some shrimp to try. And I think I'm gonna go with just like a standard crocodile spoon. Right now I have a glow one on here, but I don't know if pike really need that since we're not fishing. We're not fishing too deep and we're not fishing at night. And we've got a steel eater on there because the pike have sharp teeth. We don't want them to get off. Good thing about not a lot of snow is you can really see your tip up flag when it goes up. You know what I mean? Usually when we're fishing we have to dig like three feet of snow out of the way. Oh, I didn't understand what you were saying. I was like, it is snowing really bad though. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's not ice on the holes, but there's snow. You know what I mean? So the water's like thick. It's not icy though, that's good. It's not cold enough. Man, I can't believe how much ice is out here. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting that. We weren't going through with that chipper bar I had. Are you sure it wasn't the ice? I'm, I'm just still checking. I'm way below the ice. Oh. No, it actually grabbed it when I was standing there and pulled down. Oh, you're not fishing like a foot below? I'm fishing like a foot below. I'm about a foot and a half, two feet. Okay, I'll go it deeper. It actually grabbed and pulled down. So your hole's deeper than mine? Mm, yeah, I'm a little deeper. I'm, I'm about, like six to seven. I'm about seven feet of water. 
That's what I am too, six to seven feet of water. Eight feet with the ice. That's what I am. Yeah, something bit it when I was just sitting there talking to you and it pulled it down. It just felt kind of like a bourbon now that you said that, but I bet it was a pike. I'm not low, I'm not very low. That's what I'm switching over to. Eric got a few nibbles on his. It's quite a bit bigger though. And we don't know what that was that was biting it. That's what I was using before was the crocodile with the shrimp. And we have just had like nothing biting on the bait. So maybe it's not gonna work out that well today. I don't know. We'll see if this works. It's like slush on these holes from the snow. Whoa, that flutters a lot in there. Wow. Oh my gosh, it looks great. You should look at it. No wonder these fish like this lure. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I'm gonna stand up and get it down there a little bit. There's your crocodile. Do you want to take it for a second? Oh, your hands are probably cold. Maybe you'll catch the first one. It's a little cold out here, but I guess I could put my gloves on. I'd probably be fine. I think we gave it our all and we're gonna blame getting skunked today on the weather. So the snowstorm, it came in pretty quick and it hit pretty hard and we're thinking that it's kind of making the fish not bite. But this was a jig that we had the most um, action on. I got two bites. I forget what these are called, Columbia River Tackle, I think. These are one of our favorite jigs to use. And we're gonna pack it up. We'll try again, but I wanted to show you something pretty cool out here that we don't usually see on lakes. So I thought it was pretty cool. That's it, huh? We came out here, I don't know, probably about a week ago and we wanted to check the ice. So we came out here with Bandit and he found one of these little mounds on the ice and it's like mossy grass uh, material. And what it is, it is for a muskrat. So they come up in there through the ice and I don't know if they like sleep up there or eat up there or what they do, but he kind of got into one and flipped it up and the muskrat actually keeps the ice open. So we mentioned that there was about 13 inches of ice and there's an actual hole underneath these that goes under the water. You can see it kind of goes, see how kind of- I don't want to mess this hole up. Let's see. That's Hopefully it's not. maybe. No, that's not the hole. You really gotta, you gotta like lift it up, but. Well, look at this. We'll just kind of leave them. I bet you that's a whole air clip. We're gonna head back to the truck, make some nice hot coffee, and we're gonna cook up a mountain house meal, hang out for a couple minutes, and we're gonna head home, but I think we're gonna come back out tomorrow and see what we can do. It's supposed to be a change in the weather. Hopefully. Sunny tomorrow. Oh, okay, we have chicken alfredo, pasta, I like these ones because they come with more food. You know what I mean? Back in business, my friends. And we have about a two hour drive home. I think it's gonna be nicer weather tomorrow. And we're either gonna come back out to this lake or a neighboring lake. And one way or another, we're gonna try to get our hands on some bike. Cheers. Where's the life? Do you have? See him shrimping? Should we put him back into the hole? Look, this one has a baby. What if we just keep, let's pick an area, whichever way you think. I mean, in my head, it tells me the middle of the lake is the deepest, but I don't really, I don't have a map for this one. Do you want to use this one as the first bait one or? Well, I guess you already have bait. Let's get these little suckers back in there. Maybe they'll still be alive. Probably not, huh, after eight degrees.
right there. Almost. Seems like a great one for bait. Seems like a good one. Probably pull that first tip up. I will go straight out. The further I've gone towards the center, or even, yeah, that way, I did keep going that way. The further I've gone that way, it's gotten slowly deeper. It's probably over eight, honestly. It seemed like it was pretty comparable. I went in it. Um, think I should put a shrimp on the Barbie? Uh, on that or on the spin? I'm gonna put it. You can put a spin on your little thing? A shrimp? Yeah, or a shrimp. Well, I don't know. I don't really know what gets these fish going out here. Well, obviously, not our bait yet, and not my jig. All right, another day, another adventure. We are at a different lake today. We don't know if there's fish again, but there are shrimp and muskrats. So we've got that going for us. Um, Eric is working on drilling some holes. We've drilled quite a few here because when we first started, it was pretty shallow, um, only like a foot. And we want to be a little deeper than that. We're only allowed to have two lines at this lake. So we're going to have two tip ups and with bait. And then we're going to have two jigging poles. Do you want to put a new piece of bait on this? Do you want me to go get you a new piece? Because that's kind that's of like brand a... new bait. Oh, okay, okay. They look kind of like funky. There you go. What do you think about this one? Oh, it's really, really clear ice. Oh no! You know what? I wanted to tell you, it's actually not clear anymore. This was clear. Weird. This is see how this water's starting to freeze on top of it. It was mm. really clear. I think I'm gonna set a tip up out further out there. Okay, not deep over. For you right here. I want to show you. Not deep. Well, you're not Maybe deep not deep. even. I mean, maybe an inch deeper than you. I don't know where this lake gets deep. I'm... Where are you going? Seriously. I just want to make sure we're both aware of that spot. I didn't even see it. That's great. I mean, seriously, look at this. You, there's no way you're going to fall on the nine inches of ice. Unless there's a spring. Mm, that's it's... less than where I was. It is? Mm-hmm. By how much? That's, that's only like eight inches. Call me the day you go in eight inches. <laughs> okay. okay, leave the camera for me because I'm going to catch one. Maybe even go first and dig your hole and come back and get that in case. In case what? In case you go in. point of even changing lures or anything because I'm not going for anything where I play in. We're trying to hook a fish today. We shot down the road a few miles to the lake that we came to yesterday and we got that bite. And I'm hoping that the weather's changed enough and that the fish are biting. So we're gonna go out there. I'm gonna bring the ice chipper, see if we can chip our holes back open. We're gonna bring the jigs and see if we can catch a fish today. Pretty thick ice in my hole. It was like a close to an inch, I'd say, right? Is that what you say? Inch and a half, two inches. That's pretty thick for one night. That's it. That's it. Let it, let it take it, hun. I bet you're expecting the bird box. It's, I'm on the bottom. Let it gulp. See it, see it moving. 
I can, pull? I can tell by the angle it's a fish. Yeah. Right. Do you do you wanna listen is it biting it? Is it like swallowing it? Yeah. There we go. Oh got my it. gosh, you got a fish. You got a fish? Are you kidding me? No, it's a bird, but I'm pretty sure. You got a freaking fish though? Oh yes. It's pike. <laughs> nice size pike. I'm amazed. Mind is yeah. blown. Well, not only did we catch a fish at a lake that we didn't know if there was fish in, I was fishing on the bottom. We never fish on the bottom for pike. As you can tell from this fish right here, their eyes are like on the top of their head. So they're kind of ambush predators. They come from below and they see your lure up top and they come up and get it. I don't know, this guy, uh, he bit it on the bottom. What I was doing is I let all the way down to the dirt or the bottom of the lake and I was bouncing it off the bottom to kind of stir up the dirt. And he very, he bit it like like a burbot. He just barely bit it and took it aside and started to eat it, so. I have to honestly tell you. There we go, nice pike. That's probably what, 18 inches? 16 inches? Yeah, it's at least 18 inches. You know, just over the moon. Look at how much he ate it. We've been here for years and this is like the most that's the most impressive thing. Man. Situation. I thought, that was a burbot. I thought it was a burbot too. I was like, okay, that's a burbot. It's hey. on the bottom. There's I... no way that's a pike. Turns out it was a pike. That's his teeth. They shred these things. Did it shred it? That's what we got him on. See it? Hey, that's a really nice. He's pike. also eating a little shrimp. That's him. The fish of the trip. Good yeah, job. I kind of wasn't moving a lot, but like I, like I said, I was. I'll show you exactly what I was doing. I took it all the way down to the bottom. So right about there. And I got some tension. See, that's when I'm lifting it off the bottom, but I was banging it on the bottom like that. Letting it hit the bottom, bouncing it around. And then I just sat there like that. I must be feeling a baby pike over where I'm at. So a different technique, it's actually, yeah, I mean, that's a weird technique to catch a pike. He liked it though. That's what bit yesterday too, was a pike. Really soft bite. It let go again? He bit it and he swam to the side. There you see him? See him? Let him eat it. He's back. No. I just like, bam, nailed it. Went to the side and then it was immediately gone. It was a pike, small pike, smaller than that one. He's down there though. We're calling it a day with our one fish. I'm very thrilled for Eric. I didn't know if we were gonna catch anything at all. So that's exciting stuff for sure. And we've got a really beautiful afternoon out here. It's um. I mean, it's really only like midday, but the sun's gonna go down soon and it's just really pretty behind us. We're gonna head home and cook up our fish. There was probably, I don't know if it was just maybe one little guy kind of bouncing back and forth between these two holes and it tugged it a few times, but neither of us could really set it or, you know, pull it up. I'm thinking it was a pretty small fish. We put a lot of time and energy into, you know, not just these fishing trips, but kind of like the knowledge behind them, figuring out where we're gonna go and what we're gonna target. And I think we're both pretty happy that we can say, hey, you caught a pike at that one lake. It's definitely getting to be, you know, the real winter around here. So it's chilling down tonight. I don't know if we're gonna go into the sub temperatures, but our holes are freezing up. So we're gonna take off. We made it back to the cabin with our one single fish. It's a good way to start off the ice fishing season. And like every ice fishing season, we have uh, big plans to catch a lot of fish. We're gonna cook this guy pretty simple. We are gonna do fillets. So we're gonna leave a bone in. It's a kind of a small fish and I'm not good at doing boneless fillets, but we are gonna cook it in something pretty special. And what this is, is garlic scape butter that Ariel made. So it's butter with just like garlic in it. And the scape is like the flower bud of the garlic plant, so this should be pretty good. Let's get him filleted and put in the frying pan. Let's see what he's been eating. What do you think he's been eating, shrimp? Shrimp. 
shrimp. Oh, it's a female. What was shrimp. It? Shrimp and eggs. That looks awesome and I'm excited to eat pike. We absolutely love it. And we're gonna have a special little dinner date for two tonight with our one fish. <laughs> what are you saying that? Well, it's just like an appetizer, you know? It's just it one fish. A At least it wasn't a guppy. Yeah, I agree. that butter and you cook it in butter it's really good the skin is well, really it's good it's almost like spicy because of the garlic scapes you're not getting that oh my god that's either the pepper or but it's delicious i'm telling you right now that garlic butter they made it like a spicy garlic it's so good 